I'm excited to welcome you to the absolute best video on an introduction to functions you'll find anywhere on YouTube. In this video, I cover everything you need to know in detail and use interactive animations, beautiful illustrations, and professional editing to ensure you remain engaged in order to maximize your learning. So let's jump in. So what is a function? A function in JavaScript is a reusable block of code that performs a specific task when needed. Back to our juice bar analogy, a function would be a reusable tool that performs specific actions on ingredients. So for example, this blender is a piece of equipment that we can reuse as many times as we like to blend different ingredients. So the first thing we need to discuss is how we go about declaring a function. A function in JavaScript is defined by declaring a block of reusable code with the function keyword. We start by defining or declaring our function with the function keyword, which looks like this. It's the function keyword in JavaScript. We then give our function a name. In this case, I've called my function congratulate. And you can call your functions whatever you like, but usually it's descriptive of what the function is doing. Our function name is then followed by a set of parentheses, and then we grab curly brackets to define the function body. That is, the block of code we want to be reusable. We have an opening curly bracket over here and a closing curly bracket down here. Inside these curly brackets, we have some code we want to execute. And this makes up our function body. That is the code inside the function. This entire unit is called a function declaration. So this is how we define our function. How do we go about using it in our program? To do that, we need to talk about calling a function. Once a function has been declared, to use it, we need to call it by its name followed by parentheses. So the function we just defined was called congratulate. This is the function name. We then follow this with a set of parentheses, and this calls or executes our function in our program. So let's go play around with this inside VS Code. So I've gone ahead and created a new index.html file, where I've linked a JavaScript file called app.js, which is currently empty. So let's just go define the function we saw earlier. We use the function keyword, followed by the function name, congratulate, a set of parentheses. We grab our curly brackets, hit enter, and you'll see inside VS Code, we're automatically indented for the function body. I'll then grab console.log and add the string congratulations. Now this is our function declaration. It defines the function, but to actually use it, we need to call it. I'm gonna go open the console, and you'll see at the moment, there's just nothing here. However, if I go call the function by typing congratulate and adding a set of parentheses, I'll save this and refresh, you'll see the function is called. We get congratulations in the console. I'm just gonna comment this out and show you, you can also call the function inside the console. I'll clear this, I'll type congratulate. You'll see the console is also able to find it. I'll add my set of parentheses and I'll hit enter. And we get back congratulations being printed to the console. Now, before we move on, I wanna highlight the reusable nature of a function and why they're helpful. I'm just gonna remove this over here. We're gonna do an example of achieving a fitness goal. I'm gonna declare a variable, let steps equal 12,000 and let workout time equal 60. Now, if I wanted to congratulate a user for achieving different fitness goals, without functions, I'd have to do it like this. Let's say the first goal is if steps is greater than 10,000. To congratulate them without a function, I would have the console.log over here. Let's say another goal is if the workout time is greater than 30. Again, to congratulate them, I'd be copying this piece of code and outputting it here. So just to be clear, this function is not currently being used at all. We're just manually congratulating the user with the console.log. I'll refresh and you'll see we get two congratulations. Now this console.log is a reusable piece of code. Imagine if we had 10 fitness goals. It isn't good practice to repeat our code like this so many times. And that is why functions are useful. It contains a piece of code that we can reuse as many times as we like. So to achieve this with functions, we would simply call our function inside here and over here. So now the logic of congratulating the user is defined once and can be used as many times as you like in your program. I'll refresh and see again, we get congratulations. So that's the main use case of functions. They define reusable code. So now that we have a basic understanding of what functions are, let's add to our knowledge by learning about function parameters. Function parameters are used to provide additional information to a function, allowing it to perform tasks based on the values passed to it. So looking at our congratulate function, right now it isn't so personalized. 
it just says congratulations. But wouldn't it be great if we could congratulate a specific user? That is, we want to give our congratulations function an external value to take in to output to the console. So to achieve this inside our parentheses, we define a parameter. I've given my parameter the name user because I'm going to be passing a user in here to congratulate, but you can name your parameter whatever you like. But usually it's fairly descriptive of what the parameter is. We can then use our parameter inside our function body like this. Where now I'm using template literals and I'm using the parameter user inside the curly brackets to congratulate the specific user. So the function parameter is effectively used like a variable inside the function. So that's how we define functions with parameters. Let's now discuss calling a function with parameters. When a function has parameters, we need to provide arguments when calling it to pass the necessary information. Now arguments is a scary word, but all arguments are, are actual values we're passing to the function. So for example, when I call the congratulate function, it would look like this, where I'm passing it an argument that is a specific value, in this case, the string Daniel. Now I know the terminology parameters and arguments can be a bit confusing, so I'd like to summarize it in this table here. Parameters are variables defined in the function declaration to accept values. Because they're variables, they're general in nature. And for our function, it looks like this, where user is a parameter being used inside our function declaration to represent any user. Just think of it like a variable, Arguments, on the other hand, are the actual values passed to the function when called. So for us, congratulate Daniel. The string Daniel is an argument. It's a real life value, which will be used inside the function. So let's go play around with this inside VS Code. So let's now go and extend this example to use function parameters. Inside our function declaration here, I'm gonna use the parameter user. I'm then gonna change this congratulations to use temperate literals with our backticks. I'll then grab the dollar sign and curly brackets and add the parameter over here. And again, you can think of this just like a variable. By adding a parameter inside the parentheses, we can use that variable anywhere inside our function body. So now when our function declaration has a parameter, we need to call it with an argument, that is a specific value. So I'll add the string Daniel here. And just to mix this up, I'll add the string Alice here. I'll refresh the console, and you'll now see we have congratulations followed by the different names. So just to step you through this in more detail, what's happening is that we're providing this argument, which is a specific value. This value is effectively passed into the parentheses here and is then used over here. So that we're outputted with congratulations, Daniel, or in this case, congratulations, Alice. Okay, just putting this back. Now our function declaration can accept multiple parameters, which we need to comma separate. So I'm gonna go add another parameter here, which will be the day. So using it in our function body, I could say congratulations user on your dollar curly brackets day achievement. Now when calling the function, we need to provide an additional argument, which we comma separate. Let's do Monday. And down here, I'll do Wednesday. So refreshing the console, we now get congratulations Daniel on your Monday achievement and congratulations Alice on your Wednesday achievement. So our function declaration can accept multiple parameters. So before we finish up, I'd like to do a bit more of a real life example of using function declarations. I'm just gonna go and remove all this code. And I'd like to declare a function for an e-commerce website that takes in a price of an item and the item name and outputs the final price, considering things like tax rates, discounts, and delivery fees, as well as the item's name. So let's declare a function. We'll call it calculate final price. We'll grab our parentheses and curly brackets. Inside our parentheses, I'm gonna define two parameters. The first is the price of the item, and the second is the item name. Inside the function body, I'm gonna define some variables. We'll let tax rate equal 10% or 0.1. We'll let discount equal 0.2, which is 20%. And we'll let delivery fee equal $5. We can then calculate the final price of the item. I would declare a new variable, let total equals the price times by one minus the discount. I would then put this in brackets, multiply this by one plus the tax rate, and then add on the delivery fee. 
So this logic here is effectively discounting the price. Our discount is 0.2. So one minus 0.2 is 80%. So this is timesing the price by 80%, just changing this back. We then multiply that value by the tax rate. The tax rate is 0.1. So this turns out to be 1.1. So we're multiplying our discounted price by 1.1, effectively adding 10% to the total price. And then we're just adding on the delivery fee. I could then do console.log, grab our template literals, and type final price for, grabbing our dollar sign and curly brackets. I then want to use the parameter item name. So final price for item name is, grabbing our dollar sign, curly brackets, the total price we calculated here. And then I'm just going to add an additional dollar sign here so that whatever this value is, is in dollars. Okay, great. That's our function declaration. Let's go call our function now. So I'll calculate final price. Inside the parentheses, I now need to provide arguments, which are the actual values we're using. Let's say we have some shoes, which are $80. So the price of the shoes is 80, and the item name is the string shoes. So I'll refresh the console, and you'll now see final price for shoes is $75.4. Let's use this function again to output the final price for a jacket. Let's say the base price is $120, and our item is a jacket. I'll refresh, and you'll see final price for jacket is $110.6. And just one last example, let's say we have some headphones, which are $200. I'll refresh, and you can see final price for headphones is $181. So let's now take a look at functions in action on the flight booking website we've been using as an example so far. On the home page, the logic for the flight search would be contained in a function like this, where we have a function search flights. We're taking in multiple parameters like departure city, destination city, departure date, return date, the number of adult passengers, child passengers, and infant passengers. Based on all these parameters, we would then have a fairly large code block which would be used to output all the different flights available. Another example of using functions would be calculating the price of selected tickets. So in this case, we'd have a function like calculate total price, which is taking in the base price of the ticket, along with the number of adults, children, infants, and any discounts supplied. Inside our function body, we would then have some code which calculates the final basket price. Now functions are really helpful here because they contain a block of reusable code that's able to take in different values or arguments to perform a specific action, like calculating prices or searching for different flights. So let's wrap up by building a summary card, function declarations. We first looked at declaring a function, which looked like this, and we discussed how we can also give our function a parameter, which is like a variable that can be used inside the function body. We then discussed calling a function, which is how we go about actually using our function in our program. We saw we call the function by using the function name followed by parentheses, and if the function declaration has a parameter, we need to provide an argument which is the actual value we want to use. If you've enjoyed this style of teaching and are looking at mastering JavaScript, you can join me in my JavaScript full course, which is available for free on my channel. The course is designed for complete beginners and covers everything you need to know to code JavaScript at a professional level. In the course, you'll experience the same high quality teaching and build a whole range of real life projects from scratch. Join me today and also make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay in the loop with new releases. See you in the JavaScript full course.